vary in their colors, composition, and properties. On the basis of the factors responsible for soil formation, such as color, thickness, texture, age, chemical, and physical properties, the soil of India is classified into these types. Alluvial soil, black soil, red soil, yellow soil, arid soil, laterite soil, and forest soil. Let's learn about the major soil types in India. We will start from the northernmost part of India. Now, this area consists of mountainous regions with forests. Hence, the soil found here is named forest and mountainous soil. The soil on the slopes of the hill is generally thin, while finer particles of soil are carried away to the bottom of the hill. The coarser particles tend to remain on the upper reaches of the slopes. In the snow-covered areas of the Himalayas, these soils experience denudation and are acidic, low humus content. But as we move down in the valleys, the soil becomes fertile, especially near the riverbeds and around alluvial fans. The Himalayan river systems, namely the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra, have deposited large amounts of soil in the northern plains over a large period of time. This soil is found extensively in the northern plains and some parts of Rajasthan and Gujarat as well. This soil, which is very fertile, is called alluvial soil. No wonder the northern plains is a region well suited for agriculture. Alluvial soil is also found in the eastern coastal plains, especially in the deltas of the Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri rivers. Mostly, this soil contains adequate proportion of minerals like potash, phosphoric acid and lime, which makes it suitable for cultivation of sugarcane, paddy, wheat and other cereal and pulse crops. Now, on the basis of age, alluvial soils can be classified as old alluvial or bangar and the new alluvial or the khadar. In terms of fertility, khadar is more fertile as compared to bangar. Next up is black soil or regar soil. Now, as the name suggests, this soil is black in color and is made up of clay material and hence it is extremely fine. It is well known for its moisture holding capacity. It gets sticky when wet and becomes difficult to work on it and that's why it is tilled immediately after the first shower or during the pre-monsoon period. It is rich in soil nutrients such as calcium carbonate, magnesium, potash and lime, but poor in phosphoric contents. During the hot weather, it develops deep cracks, which helps in the proper aeration of the soil. It is suitable for cultivating cotton. That's why it is also called black cotton soil. Now, in terms of its distribution, we can see that it is predominantly found in the Deccan tract especially in the state of Maharashtra. Do you know why? Well, because the Deccan Trap region was prone to volcanic eruptions in the past. Over time, the lava from the volcano continued to accumulate and became solid. The solid rocks formed by the lava are called igneous rocks. Continuous weathering and erosion of these rocks formed the black soil. Now, what about the soil found in the great Indian desert? Well, here the climate is dry and the temperature is high. This leads to higher rates of evaporation, owing to which the soil lacks moisture and organic material. Such soil is called arid soil. And arid soil ranges from red to brown in color. 
is generally sandy in texture and saline in nature. In arid soil, at some places, the salt content is so high that it can be obtained by evaporating water. If we dig the arid soil in lower horizons, we will find kankar because of the increasing calcium content. Presence of this layer prevents infiltration of water. Although it lacks moisture needed for cultivation, but with proper irrigation facilities, it can be made suitable for agriculture. Next up is red and yellow soil. The soil, as the name suggests, is reddish in color due to the presence of iron in the soil. It looks yellow when it occurs in a hydrated form. It is found in parts of Odisha, Chhattisgarh, the southern parts of the Middle Ganga Plain and along the Piedmont zone of the Western Ghats. Laterite soil develops under tropical and subtropical climates with alternate wet and dry seasons. Heavy rainfall causes leaching of silica and lime, while iron oxide and aluminium compounds are left behind. The soil is deep, acidic in nature and deficient in plant nutrients. The soil is deficient in humus content and there is a specific reason for it. Bacteria which thrive well in warm tropical climates are responsible for removing humus from the soil. But the places where these soils support deciduous and evergreen forests, it is humus rich. Laterite soil is found on hill slopes, which makes it prone to erosion and degradation and generally not suitable for cultivation. But there are exceptions. Appropriate soil conservation techniques adopted in the hilly areas of Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu has made it suitable for growing tea and coffee. While in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and Kerala, red laterite soil is more suitable for crops like cashew nuts. The soil is also found in the Western Ghats region of Maharashtra, Odisha, some parts of West Bengal, and the northeast regions. An interesting fact about laterite soil is that it is widely cut as bricks and used for house construction. And bricks in Latin are called later, from which the word laterite has been derived. Interesting, right?